Okay, so I'll give a quick re recap again today, on like whatever the topics we discussed so far, and we'll continue with the new topic. So we discussed about uh, ERP. ERP is Enterprise Resource Planning software, which helps to run the organization business process. It provides better integration between the different departments of the organization. And by using ERP, there is a advantage of uh, like improving the business performance, right? It will reduce the communication delays and improve the business performance. And it acts as a single point of source for the data, entire organizational data. And SAP is one of the ERP product. There are a lot of other ERP products developed by different companies. SAP is one of the enterprise resource planning product. So why we are calling it as a product? It contains uh, predefined functionalities. You don't need to develop anything. It, uh, SAP provides ready to use solutions to run the organization, right? And again, even though they are providing the ready to use solutions, right? Customer requirements might be different. Along with the standard functionalities, they, they may need uh, some additional requirements. So for that, we may need to do enhancements or custom applications. The enhancements and custom applications we develop in ABAP, okay? SAP ABAP. ABAP is a fourth generation programming language. By using ABAP, we enhance or customize the applications in SAP ERP. And we discussed about OLTP and OLAP. OLTP means online transaction processing system. It is to create the business transactions, daily business transactions. Okay. We don't use it for data analysis. We use a different system, OLAP system for data analysis to generate the reports, right? By aggregating the millions of records for decision making. OL OLAP system is a decision making system. So the top level management can take decisions based on the analysis of the data. Okay to improve the business or to improve the business performance. So how are uh, transactions created in the OLTP system will be copied to OLAP system. We use ETL process after business hours, every day after business hours, we move data into OLAP system using ETL, extraction, transformation and loading process. Okay. So here in OLAP system, we maintain the historical data. Okay. Last 10 years data for the data analysis, okay? But in uh, OLTP system, we maintain only operational data. Operational data means maybe last three years or four years data, which is really useful for the transactions, okay? Not for the analysis. Is everyone clear on this? First, we load the master data, and then we load the transactional data into OLAP system. And we have, uh, uh, what is the current version of uh, SAP ERP we are using? Like uh, in the most uh, companies, they are migrating to SAP S4 HANA. That is the recent version of SAP ERP. Okay. Uh, SAP S4 HANA is a HANA dependent, like <laughs> it's database dependent. It runs only on HANA database. But if you take previous version, SAP ECC, it is database independent. It can run on any database, right? But later SAP come up with a new advanced ERP, SAP S4 HANA, which runs on, which runs only on HANA. HANA is an in-memory database and it provides great performance than the SAP ECC, okay? You take the performance uh, as a measurement, SAP S4 HANA is far better than SAP ECC. <clears throat> and again, Every year, uh, they'll release a new version of SAP S4 HANA, like 2022, 2023, with some upgrades or bug fixes, okay? And about the functional modules, in SAP, we have uh, different functional modules like sales and distribution, material management, finance, plant maintenance, production planning, right? In S4 HANA, there is a slight difference in the terminology. We, we are calling it as P2P, procure to pay, O to C, order to cash, we are calling as uh, these uh, 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 functional domains, right? O to C comes under SD, procure to pay comes under P2P. In S4 HANA, there is a slight difference in the terminology, but most of the business process are same, okay? 
and there are some industry specific modules like if you take a banking banking business is completely different right and if you take insurance insurance business process is also completely different and oil and gas their business process is also completely different for these kind of uh, uh, defense and security their business process is completely different right retail retail process is completely different so for these kind of special business process they come up with a industry specific solutions these are industry specific uh, solutions okay and the sap r3 architecture so we have three layers of the sap r3 so first one is database layer where uh, data will be permanently stored in the form of tables database can be anything if it is sap ecc right but if the system is running on sap s4 hana it can run only on uh, hana database okay so database is something where we store the data permanently in the form of tables and application layer in the application layer whatever the application programs or developments we do so those application programs will execute in application layer okay so sap s4 hana is a application and uh, hana is a database for each for every application if you take any software product uh, for that application there should be a back end database to store the data okay even if you take your mobile phone as example your android os is the application and your hard drive is the database okay and the presentation layer a screen where you can access the data right where you can access the data by sending the instructions and receiving the output by using graphical user interface screens okay can you tell me any example for uh, uh, presentation layer any real world example your gmail facebook right you are able to access right so those are all examples for the presentation layers wherever like if you have a browser you can access from anywhere right you don't need to install any servers in your system to access gmail or facebook so they they create separate server for uh, three different layers one, one server for database layer and another server for application layer and uh, different uh, presentation layers okay each user have one presentation layer to access the data so why they uh, are using separate servers for application and database because it will take huge system load to maintain both servers in the same system both database and application and also if there is any issue happens like you are going to lose both servers if there is an impact on both servers that's why they separated the both layers and uh, kept database separately and application separately okay one server this database server might be in uh, usa application server might be available in singapore they are, they might be maintaining in singapore okay always remember like to set up any data center like database center so companies will uh, analyze many factors like uh, geographical area and uh, is there any is there any chance of disasters in that area is there any chance of floods in that area right so they'll do lot of analysis before setting up the data center because if they lose the data like they, it, it's it's a very huge impact on the organization right if there is any disaster happens if they lose the server and uh, if they lost the entire organizational data it will be a huge impact on the organi uh, organization business that's why they'll think of many factors they analyze many factors before set up the data center data center that nothing but a, da a database center for large for uh, like large organizations they call it as data centers because they are going to store huge volume of data right that's about sap r3 architecture and uh, sap s4 hana is an on premise version and cloud version so on premise more control for the customer so they need to take take care of the administration activities but and uh, they have uh, uh, better customization options but if you go for cloud subscription the cloud provider will take care of the administration activities like taking backups and uh, applying any uh, upgrades support packs and everything will be take care of the cloud provider right but in the cloud you have a very limited customization options okay they recommend when you go for the cloud what do they recommend they recommend you to adopt the standard business functionality to right they they recommend you to change your business functionality as per the sap s4 hana cloud version instead of doing changes in the sap s4 hana system okay 
So they want to keep the core clean concept. Like instead of doing a lot of customizations in ERP, keep those customizations out of the ERP if you take any cloud version. Even in the on-premise version also, SAP is recommended to do the limited customizations within the SAP ERP. Keep that as a separate layer, customizations as a separate layer. And again, we have a different concept like wrap and OData. We'll discuss that later. And we discussed about master data and transactional data. So master data is something which changes very rarely, right? Like your bank uh, account master data, your customer master data and transactional data which changes very frequently. First we load, first we create the master data to create the transactions. If you take ETL process, first we load the master data and then we load the transactional data. Okay. And then uh, ABAP4, like ABAP is a fourth generation programming language. The abbreviation for ABAP is Advanced Business Application Programming Language, which we use to uh, enhance or uh, customize the SAP ERP applications. And we have also seen the data types, right? So why we use data types to store the data? For example, if you want to store some data in SAP ERP in the form of table, to create that table, for example, you are creating an employee table, employee master table. What are the fields available in employee master table? Employee name, employee ID, and uh, uh, phone number, email ID, city, address, department might be there. But if you, uh, okay, let's take each and individual field. Employee ID, what should be the data type of employee ID? What type of data we are saving in employee ID? Is it only numbers? Or is it alphabets and combination of alphabets and numbers? What type of data we save in employee? So in some companies, they yeah. use only numbers. But in some companies, they use uh, alphabet, uh, alphabet letters also along with numbers. For example, like this. GE 2345. Like this, they maintain the employee ID. Right? So it depends if they want to maintain the alphabet uh, and employee number, uh, sorry, uh, numbers combination, what type of data type they need to take? What is the data type that is suitable? Character type, because they are using both alphabets and numbers to create the employee ID. But if the employee ID contains only numbers, what type of data, what, what data type we need to take? Number. Number data type. Okay. What is the default length of character and uh, number? one one letter or one number you can store if you don't provide any length okay another example for character type data employee name to store the employee name what is the suitable uh, data type character, character data type. because it accepts the alphabets right it accepts the alphabets we cannot use number for the employee name it won't accept the alphabets and for date, what is the use of date data type to sort the date values? For example, date of join of the employee, right? We can use uh, this date data type D. We don't need to provide any length for this. By default, it have a length of eight internal length and external length display length is 10, including mm -hmm. separators. We take this as an example. First one is the internal uh, date value, mm -hmm. which contains year, month and day. And uh, this is the external date value, which contains separators. Okay. But whenever you are uh, do, uh, using date in your uh, application programs, what is the date format you have to consider? This one. Year, month, mm -hmm. and day without mm -hmm. any separators. It will automatically convert into external length. Okay. Time. Time is also having default length. To, to store the time value, we use this data type. So internal length is 6 and external length is 8. Internal uh, format is hours, minutes and uh, seconds. Okay. And this is the external length with separator. When we use a string data type, string also can accept any value, including alphabets, numbers and special characters. So if you don't know the exact length of the specific value, we take the string data type. Like it is for undefined length. By using character, you can define the length. You can restrict a specific length for that particular field. String is for undefined length. What about integer? Integer is also storing the numerical values. But how? What is uh, like? What is the difference between number and integer? integer number cannot integer store uh, negative pos uh, uh, negative values. It will store only positive values. And again, uh, it, we cannot say it is a value. 
right? It's some number. We can call it as some number. Like zip code is not a value, right? Phone number is not a value, right? There are some attributes. There, there are some kind of master data, right? But if you take integer, count of population in a village, it's a value, right? Total count of population in a village. It's a value, right? Total yes, count sir. of population in the country. That is also value. For example, 10 million. Right? So integer can I accept positive or negative values also. We, for example, for integer data type is uh, such kind of values like population, right? Count, count of something. So we store these kind of data. And it won't accept any decimal places. It will round the value. Okay. It will round the value. If you, if you pass the decimal place, it will round the value. Yesterday I have shown you, right, how it will round the value. Packed decimal. Packed decimal is for the currency and quantity, right? For example, price of something, price of a product. So, so the, the price might include decimal places, right? 10 rupees 99 paisa. We need to uh, consider the decimal places also, right? If you are if you are uh, talking about the price, but if you use integer pr for price, what will happen? Integer will round the value, right? Then it will produce incorrect results. Even 10 paisa is also matter, right? For any large organization, because they do millions of transactions. Even 10 paisa also make a big difference in the business, uh, like uh, that outcome. So that's why we use packet decimal to store the exact value. Okay. So it will accept decimal places. And this is the conversion. If you want to pass one data type value into another data type value. So what is the possibility you can see here? Here the star means it will accept, but there will be some changes. If you pass packet decimal value to number, it will exclude the decimal, decimal places. Okay. Is everyone clear? Let's log on to the SAP server. How to log on to our SAP practice servers? So we are not installing anything. We are using a remote desktop connection where a server will be automatically set up somewhere. We are going to connect to that system using remote desktop connection. We open run and type MSTSC, click on OK. Or you can also use a search remote desktop connection. Click on that. And here you need to enter the IP address and the port number. I'll provide these details. You need to enter the IP address and port number and click on connect. And before connecting, it will ask for user ID and password. You need to enter the user ID and password like this. <coughs> okay. You need to enter the user ID and password here and click on connect to connect to the SAP server. First time it will show this warning. Click on yes. Okay. Now we have connected to the remote desktop server. Okay. Here you can see SAP log. Here you can see SAP logon. If you can't find it in the desktop, go to search and search for SAP logon. We can access in a multiple ways. We can access through SAP logon and uh, we can also access through Eclipse. Eclipse or uh, we call it as HANA Studio, which is built on Eclipse or you can have Eclipse uh, environment, Eclipse uh, IED, Integrated Development Environment uh, to access the SAP. First, we'll see how to access using uh, SAP GUI and after a few sessions, we'll see how to access uh, same SAP server using Eclipse. Okay. So here we have different servers are already configured, but if you want to configure a new server, click on create new connection. Click on next here. You need the connection details. Description can be anything. For example, S4HANA. 
and you need the application server. Application server is IP, might be IP address or application server address, which, which should be provided by system, system administrators. They have to provide the application server, instance number and system ID and then your user ID and password. Once you configure the server, double click on the server and it will ask for a user ID and password. You need to enter the user ID and you need to enter the password. Here we have a client and language. Client is a logical partition. Again, I'll explain it after two sessions. I don't want to confuse you now, but I'll explain about the login language. So SAP ERP can support multiple languages. SAP ERP can support multiple languages, many languages like Arabic, German, Japanese, English, right? It will support many languages, uh, Swedish, because if you go to China, can they understand English? Can they do use, uh, can they use uh, English in their uh, business transactions? No, they don't use, they'll use their native language. If you go to Japan, they don't use English in their daily transaction. They use Japanese. If you go to Germany, will they use English? No, they don't use English. They use German, right? So for that reason, SAP, SAP uh, providing language, automatic language translation. If you log in with English, it will display the data in English. If you log in with the German, it will display the data in uh, German. DE, DE is for German uh, language. JP is for Jap uh, Japanese language. If those languages are con uh, configured in your ERP, you can language you can log in with uh, those languages to uh, to view the data in that specific language. Okay. So SAP provides automatic language translations. When your when the user is login, they need to choose the la uh, language in which language they want to access the SAP ERP. But for as a web developer, it won't make any difference for you. Click on enter to login, enter the user ID password and click on enter. So this is called initial screen. This is called initial screen to access any to access any applications in SAP. So we use a transaction codes. How, how can we access the applications? We use transaction, transaction, codes. transaction codes. For functional consultants, there are separate set of transaction codes. For developers, for ABAP developers, there are separate set of transaction codes, <coughs> right? So once we started, once we start working on this uh, system, right? You can remember a lot of transaction codes. The basic transaction code, what ABAP developers use is SE38, SE38. It is a application to create the programs. We call it as ABAP editor or ABAP workbench. We call this transaction code as ABAP editor or ABAP workbench, where we create the programs. So what is the transaction code? SE38, SE38 is the transaction code to access the ABAP editor, where we can access the programs, where we can access the standard programs provided by SAP or the custom programs created by the application developers. Okay. So there's a, there, are, there are thousands of standard programs available in system because SAP provided <coughs> predefined standard functionalities, right? To support different business functionalities. <coughs> Sorry. Now we'll see how to access standard programs, but how to create a custom program. There is a rule. There is a rule in custom. There is a rule in creating custom applications in SAP. Those custom application names should be starts with the Z or Y, right? Any custom object you are creating in SAP, that custom object name should starts with the Z or Y. I am creating a simple program. Observe Z demo print data a simple program i am creating please observe here
if the program is already available in the system with the same name you cannot create again with the same name you need to choose a different name okay and why i am using this underscore is it mandatory to use underscore no underscore is not mandatory but to make some difference to separate the name right instead of combining the entire name i am using underscore because space is not allowed a blank space is not allowed in the name you can use a underscore to separate if you want to separate the words of the program name okay space is not allowed blank space is not allowed again you can create without underscore create it create the program provide the title so when you execute the program what is the title you want to see or demo demo program now one important option you need to select is type of the program i'll explain the different types later but for now choose executable program executable program executable program is something which can execute independently without any dependency it can accept the input and display the output that's what we called as executable program click on save now it will ask for a package package is nothing but kind of folder in which folder area you want to save for example if it is related to sales and distribution save in that a specific package related to sales and distribution if program is specific to finance hey save this in a specific package for example zfi save in that package because it's a finance related application okay for now we are selecting local object local object is a local package local object is a local package so there is some dependency uh, if you select local object again we'll discuss that later for now choose local object it's a local package observe this it is automatically generated this code so this is comment area if you want to maintain any comments about the program about the functionality of the program or any any notes right if you want to maintain any notes about the program you can maintain here this is a demo tab program some kind of notes some kind of instructions you can maintain here and this is not a executable code it is commented right if you keep this star in uh, in the in between like uh, before that uh, statement right it will comment that code okay remove that it will un comment comment commented code cannot be executed okay and the what is the first statement of the program automatically generated report space program name it will automatically generate and it, this should be the first statement of the program don't remove this and go to next line press enter and go to next line i'm trying to display something what is the syntax to display the output in a map write write statement is the keyword or syntax to display the output this is a demo program i'm enclosing this this text in single quotes because it is a character type data right is it a character type data or numerical type data whatever the value i have uh, just entered character type data character type data right so i have to enclose in single quotes if it is a character type data and hard coded value if it is a hard coded value right i need to enclose within the single quotes now let's assume i want to print uh, this value as output what is the syntax we need to write write statement write statement will print the value in the output output screen okay so let's assume my program is completed click on save now before executing it i want to check the syntax consistency of the program is there any errors in the program or not for that we use a check save remember the steps steps save control s check control f2 and uh, activate 
these three steps you have to follow whenever you do any changes or whenever you create a new program save check and activate as long as the program is inactive you cannot execute it you can execute only active programs even you wrote 2000 lines of functionality and if you don't activate it you cannot execute it okay so you need to activate the program save the program check the program when i check it no syntax errors found and uh, activate the program select the program because these are these are all inactive objects created by different other uh, developers you can ignore all of these <coughs> okay since it's a training system uh, like there are different programs created for the training purpose select your program and click on continue to activate your program is active now now execute how to execute press f8 in the key in the keyboard shortcuts or click on this direct processing this is the output screen where it where it is displaying the output where is where it is displaying the output this is printing value whatever we entered in the right statement right now i'm using incorrect syntax check the program check what it is saying it is showing a error right in which line you can see the line number here line number 8 there is a error in the line number 8 and read the error the statement w r i t a is not expected a correct similar statement is w r i t e it is automatically predicting what should be the correct syntax okay it is it is able to automatically predict that what should be the correct syntax if you if you simply press this correct errors button it will automatically fix the value if you simply fix this it will automatically fix the syntax or you can manually change the syntax if i press this it will automatically fix the syntax check check the program and activate and please remember after completion of the syntax you need to use a dot you need to close the statement with the dot that is mandatory okay is it all clear execute it will display the output you can write multiple write statements if you want to display multiple values if you want to print the multiple values too activate the program again because you did the change execute it is printing the other value also but it is displaying in the same line right if you want to if you want to print this uh, second value in a separate line use a backslash use backslash like this and execute it will print that value in the second line right always save the program check the program and activate the program is it all clear 